What's going on guys? This is Lior and welcome back to the channel. Now, what I thought I would do in this video is define a term that is thrown out in the multifamily space quite often, and that is syndication, right? In the real estate space, we have a lot of different terms always floating around, and I know a lot of you guys uh, get confused or just not 100% sure exactly what this refers to. So I'm gonna define exactly what syndication is. We'll talk about the structure, give examples, so next time you know exactly what we're referring to when we're talking about multifamily syndication. So with that, let's get at it. What's going on guys? My name is Lior and welcome back to my channel. Now, before I get into the meat and potatoes of the video, super quickly guys, if this is your first time on my channel, first of all, welcome. Second of all, make sure you smash that subscribe button for me. I'm putting out videos all the time on this channel, talking about multifamily investing, real estate investing, syndication, and everything in between. So if that's the kind of content you're looking for, make sure you subscribe. So let's get right into it and talk about what syndication actually is. And at its core, syndication is essentially just a fancy terminology for what is really crowdfunding, right? Basically, it's the pooling of money together between multiple folks to go buy a larger piece of property that otherwise each individual investor may have not been able to do on his or her own. Now, before we actually talk about the advantages and disadvantages of syndication, let's actually break down the structure of who is involved in a syndication, right? So you typically have two parties involved in a syndication. The first is your uh, general partner, right? Or the GP. Now the general partner, right? And again, this could be, this could be one person, a group of folks, uh, it, it depends. The general partner is essentially the operational person, right? The general partner typically finds the deal, right? He's got the, he or she has the contacts with brokers, other people that find deals. They're the ones that line up the debt financing, right? Deal with the, mor uh, with the mortgage brokers. Then they are actually the ones operationally executing on the business plan, right? So once they close on the property, if there needs to be any sort of renovation work, anything like that, they're responsible for that. And they're just responsible for day-to-day -day operations and management. Now, the other party involved in this education is the limited partner or the LPs, right? And the limited partners essentially are the capital partners in the transaction, right? So basically they are the ones providing the capital uh, or the equity required to purchase the asset, right? So let's say you're buying what, you know, for example, a $10 million piece of property, right? A operator has found a $10 million piece of property. He needs, let's say 25% down on the mortgage is two and a half million, um, plus say as some additional cost, um, renovation costs, let's say another million. So let's say the operator needs three and a half million dollars to do the deal, right? So typically he will pull together three and a half million dollars from a bunch of different limited partners, right? Um, they are the ones providing the funds for the deal. Now, in exchange for running the deal and actually executing and doing everything in return, the GP or the general partner typically gets a percent ownership in the deal. The LPs or the limited partners also get a percent ownership in the deal in exchange for providing the capital required to do the transaction. Now, there's a bunch of different ways to structure deals, splits, all that sort of stuff. I would say very at a high, high level, typical splits you might see may range from anything from say 70 percent, uh, 70 and 30 percent splits to 80, 20 percent splits um, in favor of the limited partners typically. Sometimes you might see 60, 40s or even 50, 50s. Um, again, a lot of this, there's a lot of different ways to structure deals. That's a whole nother topic on its own. Um, it can get quite complicated, but just so you understand, typically the limited partners and the general partners split ownership in the deal, um, and that is the value each uh, party provides. So what's the benefit for a limited partner to actually invest in a syndication? Well, think about it like this. So in that example we brought up of a $10 million building, we know now that let's say you need about three and a half million dollars, right? Now, if I'm an average investor, let's say with about a hundred or $200,000, and I wanna invest in a large piece of commercial real estate, that's gonna be very, very hard for me to do that myself, right? Because I don't have the funds, right? I only have a hundred to $200,000. Obviously you need three and a half million. Um, so it would be basically impossible for me to go buy a large piece of multifamily, commercial real estate, whatever it may be. 
But by syndication, you're essentially pooling your money with other capital partners, right? Other limited partners. And together, you're essentially pooling your money and, and being able to now go buy a larger piece of real estate that you wouldn't have been able to buy on your own. The second important piece to this is as a limited partner, right? Not only may you be a little bit restricted on the fund side, right? Because you don't necessarily have the three and a half million dollars yourself to go buy that piece of real estate, but you may not have that operational experience to actually go pull that down, even if you did have the funds, right? Because most limited partners that I work with typically are busy professionals, other business owners, right? And they are busy doing whatever it is that they need to do to earn their income, right? There's a reason they have 100, 200 or more thousand dollars to invest in real estate. And it's because they're typically successful in what they do, right? So they are typically high earned professionals, whether in the corporate world, again, business owners, uh, consultants, 1099s, whatever it may be, right? So you are busy doing that, but you don't necessarily have the time to get in, learn the biz real estate business, and actually execute operationally, right? Make the contacts with brokers, make the contacts with mortgage brokers, um, actually build up a team on the management side, on the asset management side, um, execute a renovation plan and everything in between, right? I mean, doing these deals is certainly a full-time business on its own. So as a limited partner, you're probably busy doing whatever it is that makes you money. So you just don't have the bandwidth to do this kind of deal by yourself. And finally, the last key advantage uh, for a limited partner in a, in, a, in a syndication is even though you're just getting a small percentage of the deal typically, right? Let's say again, in a three and a half million dollar raise, you're only putting a hundred, $200,000, you're getting a smaller percentage, but you still get all the benefits of real estate investing even though you just have a percent ownership in a larger building, right? So, you know, all the benefits of real estate investing, I'm not gonna go super deep in this video, but of course the cash flow, the de uh, debt pay down, the appreciation, the tax benefits, all of those are still very much in play for each limited partner involved in a syndication, right? So a lot of people invest in these deals because they can still earn excellent returns on the money they put in, you know, and again, they can have good cash flow, they have good equity upside, um, or whatever the proposition of that specific deal may be. Now for the general partners, there are also plenty of advantages to working through a syndication structure. Because if you think about it, I'm, you know, I'm a general partner myself or an operator. It is hard for us to grow uh, and scale a large real estate business because it is a very capital intensive business, right? Every single transaction you need, you know, for an, your average $10 million transaction, you're going to need three, $4 million. And maybe you have that kind of cash as an operator once, but it's hard to do that on a repeated cycle, right? Having great capital partners who can bring in the funds makes it a lot easier for you to continue to scale your business, right? Bring on better employees, bring on better resources, and overall just improve the quality of the operation, right? So you can see it's a fantastic win-win for both the LPs and the GPs. The LPs get that exposure into large, uh, you know, multifamily or commercial assets that they couldn't have otherwise. They can partner up with experienced operational real estate investors who know how to execute on deals, right? And for the general partners, they can continue to grow out their business, scale out, with funds in place, they can buy more and more buildings, afford better, better staff on their team at the properties. And it's just a fantastic win-win overall. So hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that kind of gives you an idea of the structure of a syndication, the benefits to each party and why folks do it. So of course, if you have any questions, make sure you put them in the comments below.